the sankirtan just now we have performed. It is vibration of the transcendental sound. This will help us in clearing the dust which we have accumulated on the surface of our mind. The whole thing is misunderstand if we as pure source, uh, pure consciousness, naturally we are uh, aloof from material contamination. But due to our long association with this material atmosphere. We have accumulated a great and thick layer of dust on the mind. So as soon as the dust is cleared off, then we can see ourselves what we are. So we are discussing for the last few days on the uh, constitutional position of ourself, myself, yourself, the soul, your soul. Now we have discussed that this pure soul is distinct from this material body, and we can understand this constitution of the soul by the presence of consciousness. The Lord says, Krishna says, that avinasi tatad vidhi jena sarva midam tatam. You can understand what you are. You are present all over your body. You are present all over your body. Uh, wherever you can try by pinching your body, you will feel some pain. Uh, this this part of this body or this part of this body, and this pain feeling will be stopped as soon as the consciousness is taken away from this body. That body, where, where there is no consciousness, the dead body does not feel even he is chopped off by some chopper, because the consciousness is gone. Therefore, it is not very difficult to understand that I am the consciousness. I am not this material body. We have discussed all this point. Now, so far, scriptures are concerned. There are different scriptures all over the world in the civilized society. But Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says that the essence of all scripture is to understand my constitutional position. That's all. All the rituals, we should not be stuck up to the rituals or to the formulas of the... Of course, in the preliminary stages, we require to stick to the formulas of religious scripture. But we must know that the whole idea is targeted to understand my real position. That is the whole idea of all scripture. And the Bhagavad Gita, it has been very nicely described. Jaman Arthudopane Taman Sankritu Dati. Jaman Arthudopane Sarvatu Sankritu Dati. Taman Sarveshu Bedeshu Brahmanasa Vijanataha. 
ब्राह्मण से भी जान कहा वन हु नोज द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ दिस होल ही साल ब्राह्मण हा बिकॉज दि सोल इज ब्रह्म सोल इज नॉट मैटर द वन हु नोज द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ दिस होल ही इज कॉल ब्राह्मण वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस दिस मैटर दैट ब्राह्मण ए डज नॉट मीन ए पर्टिक्युलर क्लास और बॉर्न इन ए पर्टिक्युलर कंट्री ए ब्राह्मण मीन्स हु नोज द पोजिशन ऑफ द सोल और द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ द सोल ही इज ब्राह्मण जस्ट लाइक ए पर्सन हुई इज कॉन्वर्सेंट with medical science he is called a medical man or a doctor it doesn't matter whether he is born in india or born in america or whether he is black or white it doesn't matter one must have the qualification of a medical man and he is called a doctor similarly bhagavad gita also uh, accepts the brahminical culture the brahminical culture brahminical culture means the social position in which everyone is assisted to elevate himself to the highest position of understanding the position and the constitution of the soul that should be the aim of human society human society is not animal society the difference between animal society and human society is that a human being whoever he may be he can if he is taught if he is given training if he is educated he can understand his real position that he is not this body but he is your consciousness he is spirit soul but in the animal society however a big animal may be either he may be a lion or a tiger or an elephant or any other big animal he he cannot be taught about the constitution of the soul although he has got the soul all the lower animals or oh, he has also got the consciousness he has got also to a soul but unfortunately he has not got the uh, mind facility the bodily facility or developed uh, intelligence by which he can understand uh, that what he is so that is the difference between animal and human being so in the human society uh, is they do not care to understand this factual position of his uh, soul or consciousness then he is no better than the animal yes <clears throat> that is the vedic uh, verse ahara nidra bhaya mai sunancha सामान्यमेत पशुधी नाण धर्म ही तस्या एक ही विशेष धर्मेन हीना पशुधी सामना आहार आहार मीन्स ईटिंग निद्रा मीन्स स्लीपिंग एंड भय भय मीन्स शेयरिंग एंड मैथुन मैथुन मीन्स सेक्सुअल इंटरको सो दी फोर थिंग four principles of life there is in the animal kingdom and in the human kingdom ah but the human kingdom the human body is distinct from the animal body in the respect this respect that uh, in human society there is a religion religion generally we understand as religion religion means the culture of the spirit soul 
it may be uh, in different way uh, understood in different countries, but the whole idea uh, is to understand the spirit soul. So, dharmena hīdā pasibhi samāna. Uh, if the human society is not uh, very eager to understand the real position of the soul or consciousness, then uh, he is no better than the animals. That is the first one, the basic and actually it is so. Uh, our developed consciousness, our developed life should be used, should be utilized in this human form of life to understand uh, what I am. The whole trouble, whole trouble is, the whole trouble of the human society is because they have forgotten the constitutional position of itself. So we have already discussed all these points in previous meetings, but because uh, today we have got some new friends, ladies and gentlemen, therefore I have uh, given me a summary of the last uh, meetings. <coughs> now, today we have to consider that simply theoretically knowing that I am consciousness will not do. Simply theoretical knowledge. Uh, because the position of consciousness is activity. Activity. Now, my body is active. I am speaking to you. You are hearing to me. We congregationally, we chanted Sankirtan just now. Why? Because the consciousness is present. If there was no consciousness either in you or I, then I could not chant, neither you could hear, or neither you could chant, neither I could hear. So therefore, the position of the consciousness is activity. Activity. The, the philosophy, there are many philosophies in the world, uh, particularly the philosophy of uh, which is called atheism, they think that consciousness is produced by material combination. And when consciousness is gone, that means the material composition uh, could not um, tolerate or could not produce anything. They have got a different theory like that. But uh, so far we are concerned, uh, Vedic literature or Srimad Bhagavad Gita uh, does not, I mean to say, accept this theory. Uh, consciousness is eternal. Uh, consciousness is eternal and consciousness is, consciousness is the symptom of the soul. Soul is eternal. When the soul takes and shelter in the matter, then the matter develops. Not that, that combination of matter you can produce soul. That is not possible. Ah. If that would have been possible, then there are many great scientists and many scientific laboratories, especially in your uh, Western countries, in Europe and America, but nobody could produce a single living being in the laboratory, scientific life. That is not possible. You could produce great complicated machinery, but you cannot produce the machine driver. The machine can be produced, but machine driver cannot be produced. And without machine driver, all machines are useless. All machines are useless. Oh. A child may see in the street, oh, how a nice motor car is passing with so much speed. He is 
uh, I mean, struck with wonder that without any horse, how the motor car is going on. I mean, those who have no experience, how machine works. Uh, just like in India, of course, I heard this story from my professor, uh, and I was a student of logic in my I class, and this example was given by my professor, Dr. Purnachandra Sen, I still remember, that when first railway was started from Howrah to Bardhavan, about sixty-four miles during British period, say about two hundred years before, now the cultivators on both sides of the line, they were seeing the railway engine going with wonder. Oh, so somebody, the, this this story was cited in connection with chapter of hypothesis. In logic, there is a chapter of hypothesis. So somebody suggested that there must be horse within the engine, otherwise it cannot go. Because they have got experience that without horse, nothing can be pulled on. It is horseless. So the hypothesis was that there must be horses within the engine, otherwise it cannot go. So similarly, uh, uh, the machine, the machine, how that uh, wonderful it may be. So if not horse, at, at least if there is no driver, it cannot move. It cannot move. The whole world is moving by combination of matter and spirit. That's all. The whole material world. Just like my body is moving due to the presence of myself as soul, similarly it is very easy to understand the whole cosmic manifestation is working uh, due to the presence of the Supreme Soul, whom we call God, or the Super Soul, or Paramatma, or Bhagavad, whatever name you may call, that doesn't matter. But you must understand that as without presence of the Soul, the body cannot move. Similarly, the whole materialistic world, cosmic atmosphere, is moving due to the presence of the super soul. Now, in Bhagavad Gita, you will find that we, individual souls, are parts and parcels of the super soul. So, we have got eternal relation with the Supreme Soul. We have got stand and relation with the Supreme Soul qualitatively. Qualitatively. Uh, not quantitatively. Uh, we are one with the Supreme qualitatively. Just like a drop of ocean water qualitatively is equal to the mass water in the ocean. The mass water in the ocean is salty, and the drop of ocean water, if you taste it, you will find it is also salt. So the chemical composition of the water, either in drop or in vast mass, is the same. But the drop of ocean water is never equal to the vast, uh, I mean, the mass water in the ocean. That is our position. We are in quality, just God is similarly, we are also in quality, the same chemically or constitutionally or qualitatively. But God's power and my power is different. Uh, just like the uh, mass water in the ocean, it can play a havoc, but a drop of water, uh, that it is not possible by the drop of the water. Similarly, that is the difference between ourselves and God. We are minute particles, minute particles, just like the sun and the sun rays. 
the sun shine, the sun rays, they are also combination of molecules of uh, some shining material. material. Oh. The shining material, so that uh, sunshine is not different from the sun, but at the same time, uh, same time, sunshine is not the sun. Oh. This is called simultaneously one and different. Oh. This philosophy was, uh, I mean to say, expounded by Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Achinta Bhidadhe. Achinta Bhidadhe. Simultaneously one and different. Now, in order to keep our position intact, that is to, that theoretically we understand or we have understood that I am not this body, but I am uh, consciousness, pure soul. That is our theoretical, and not theoretical, but it is practical. Anyone can understand, any sane man can understand that I am not this body, I am this soul. Now, to keep myself fixed up in that conviction, we require to work for it. Otherwise, as I was explaining to you, that a, a, a child, a boy, is, uh, I mean, uh, very much addicted to play, but if you want to uh, give him, uh, if you want to stop his mischievous activities, uh, and if you want to um, stop him, then you must give him some good engagement. If you simply stop the child, so don't play. Oh, by threatening or by some other way, you can stop him artificially for some time. Uh, but as soon as he gets opportunity, he'll again play. Uh, so you must engage him with some good task. Uh, so that he may have attraction and he may be engaged in that good task so that he may not spoil or waste his time by playing or by mischievous activity. Similarly, consciousness is active. So, to, to be in the consciousness plane, if you do not give uh, engagement to the consciousness, then naturally consciousness will act through this body. We have to act in such a way that at the present moment I am within this body. Ah. So we have to make utilization of a bad bargain. I, I don't require this body. Somehow or other, I am now entrapped or encased in this material body, and all my sufferings are due to this body. Therefore, the whole aim of human life is to get away from this material body and to be situated in the spiritual life. Now, in order to achieve that end of life, we have to begin a professional spiritual life. Professional spiritual life. That professional spiritual life is stated in the Bhagavad Gita. Karmani eva adhikaraste ma phalesu kadachana ma karma phalahetu dhu mate sangha asti akarmani. Karma. Karma means what? Karma means what? One should not think that because I am not this body, so I shall cease to work. No. You cannot cease to work. Ah. If you cease to work, then idle brain will be a devil's swartha. No. You have to work. Ah. 
So therefore the Lord says the technique of acting on the spiritual platform is that you have your right to act. You have your right to act according to your position. But karmani eva adhikaraste ma phale sukadachana. But you should not desire to enjoy the fruit of your activity. That is the text. You should not desire to enjoy the fruit of activity. Then if I want to enjoy the fruit of my activity, then what it will be? Suppose I am a businessman, I have made a profit of ten million dollars in this year. So do, do you mean to say that I shall not enjoy this huge amount of money? I shall throw it away? Oh. Yes. Uh, the Bhagavad Gita says that ma phalesh kadachana, you cannot take the fruitive result of your war. Uh, then if I do it, then what it will be? Then he says, ma karma phalahitu dhu. Don't be cause of your activities. Then you will be bound by the interaction of your activities. Don't be cause of your activity. Then you shall be bound up by the effects of your activity. You don't be cause, then effect will not catch you. Ma karma phalahitu bhi mate sangasi akarmani. Then if you say, the like better I shall not do anything, uh, no, that also will not be permitted. You cannot stop acting. At the same time, you cannot take the fruitive result of your activity. And if you think that, oh, I am not going to just like uh, in India, uh, one business friend, he was selling my books, he, he, he was saying, we are not going to make any huge uh, business this year. Because if we do business, the profit is small, the whole thing will be taken by government, by income tax. So we are stopping to work, to have more business. This is the position, because our mind is so inclined that if I cannot enjoy the fruit of my activities, then I am, then I am disinclined. But as you know, there is a a uh, proverb in English uh, that proprietorship can't stand into gold. Uh, a person working on his own account, oh, he can turn sand into gold. But a person working for others' account, oh, that is not possible. Uh, he will be slow. <laughs> he will be slow. Uh, because the purpose is that why shall I work so hard? It will be enjoyed. Just like our business friend was uh, speaking to me, that why should we work so hard and make huge profit that the whole thing will be taken by the government. But here uh, uh, the Lord says that you cannot stop your work, neither you can enjoy the activity, the fruit of your activity. That is the work on spiritual plane. Now we have to understand this very uh, uh, cautiously. The first thing is that he says, karmani eva adhikaraste. Every, everybody has got his particular position. And according to his position, there is particular work also. That is the system all over the world. Now, according to Bhagavad Gita, uh, the, by the division, not according to Bhagavad Gita, according to Vedic conception of life, the human society is divided into four divisions according to the quality of work. Uh, 
that in the Bhagavad Gita also we find the chatut varnam maya srishtam guna karma vibhagata. Uh, the uh, caste system, chatut varnam, whereas you have heard about Indian caste system, the caste system is natural. Of course, in India it has become a hereditary thing, but uh, this, this caste system is all over the universe, even among the animal society. Uh, that, that division of caste is made according to quality and worth. Quality and worth. Uh, now that caste system, that quality and worth is divided according to the quality means quality of the material modes of nature. There are three qualities by which the material world is moving. The quality of goodness, the quality of passion, and the quality of ignorance. Those who are situated on the quality of goodness, they are called Brahmins. And their symptoms are also mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita. I shall uh, give you a statement of this system. Now, those who are situated on the quality of goodness, they are called brands. Uh, that quality of goodness is current all over the universe. So, anyone situated in that quality, he is brand. And those who are situated in the quality of uh, passion, they are called Kshatriyas. And those who are situated in the quality of, uh, mixed quality of ignorance and passion, they are called Vaisas or the mercantile community. And those who are situated in the quality of ignorance, they are called Sudras or the laborer class. So in this way, there are different classes and different castes all over the world. You may call it caste or uh, division of labor or division of the society. Uh, these four divisions are there all over the universe. The intelligent class, the administrative class, the productive class, and the laborer class. So, uh, the intelligent class, they have got separate department of duty. The administrative class, they have also got separate department of duty. Similarly, the mercantile class, they have got separate uh, activity. And the laborer class, they have only one activity to serve others, that's all. <coughs> because they cannot do anything independently. Therefore, they have to offer the service to the higher class, to the administrative class, or to the mercantile class, or the intelligent class, and take some payment for its value. <coughs> so these divisions, these divisions, so the Lord says, Lord Krishna says, that according to your quality, you have to do your duty. You just say, just say, you can, uh, hereditary or by your own choice, uh, you can have your own duty. But there is no question of that one should be idle. No. Uh, if you are intelligent class, then you have to take to intelligent uh, quality of work. Uh, just like you, you must become a scientist, you must become uh, politician, uh, not politician, philosopher, you must be uh, religionist, uh, uh, so many intelligent class of us. So you must engage in that way. If you are actually intelligent, if you belong to the intelligent class. Now, if you are administrative class, uh, then you must take to the politics, uh, election, be elected the mayor, be elected president, or something like that, and work in that way. And if you belong, to the uh, mercantile community, then you must uh, do business and uh, uh, produce 
uh, agricultural grains and distribute them, uh, that is your business. Uh, in the Bhagavad Gita I will find that the mercantile class, uh, what mercantile class? Kisi goraksha banijan vaisyakarma sabhavad. Vaisya means the mercantile community. They are meant for giving protection to the animals and produce grain and distribute and make trade on them. That's all. Because formerly there was no industry. Uh, people generally depended on agriculture uh, work. Therefore, the mercantile community, they used to produce uh, food grains and distribute them. And protection of cow was their duty. As the king was entrusted to protect the life of the citizen, similarly, the Vaisya class or the mercantile class, they were entrusted to protect the life of cow. Uh, why particularly cow is protected? Because milk is very essential food for the human society. Therefore, uh, cow protection is the beauty of the human society. That is the conception of Vedic literature. Now, the Lord says that karmani adhikarasthe. Now, according to your quality and according to your position, you have to work. You cannot stop working, but uh, you, you should not, uh, you should not uh, enjoy the fruit. Uh, uh, that is, in, in other way, this is a conception of spiritual communion. Spiritual communion. Now, now, uh, just like in communist country, the center is the state. Uh, nobody is private proprietor, but uh, everyone is a member of the state, and whatever he earns, it goes to the state. That is, that is a, I, so far I know this is a communistic idea. Now here, if I am not entitled to hmm, Take the result of my uh, labor or my activity, then whom it is going to? Uh, who shall enjoy it? Uh, so uh, that is the concession of uh, spiritual life. Uh, that means uh, you, your earnings, your earnings should be distributed to the uh, central point, or uh, to, to the central point. The central a point is God. Instead of making central point to any limited thing, if you make the central point God, and if you work on His behalf, and if you think that it should be enjoyed by the Supreme Lord, then your spiritual life is fixed up. Then your spiritual life is fixed up. Ah, because your you are not discouraged to produce, but the production or the entire result of your work, the fruitive result, should go to somebody. And who is that somebody? And if you are, if you are not going to enjoy, then who is going to enjoy? That means this should be enjoyed by everyone through the central point of God. Just like the state uh, realizes taxes from you, that taxes is distributed. Taxes, tax is distributed throughout the state. Uh, so, as you deposit tax to the state and it is distributed throughout the uh, whole state, similarly, if uh, your fruitive result is offered to the Supreme Lord, uh, then your um, fruitive result is distributed to everyone central point. That is the spiritual state. Now, how to do it? If you say that where is God? Where is God whom to offer my intuitive results? That, that point is uh, uh, answered by the uh, devotional service. Devotional service. Now, if you engage 
your money for the service of the Lord, then that 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 means you are offering to the Lord for the service of the Lord. Now, what is the service? What is the service of the Lord? The service of the Lord. Now, so far Bhagavad Gita is concerned. The Lord says that jada jada hi dharma sagglani bhavati bharata. Abhutthanam adharmasya tadatmanam sijamaham. Whenever there is uh, any flaw in the standard process of religiosity, at that time I take my incarnation and I come on this earth. So this is a fact. This is a fact. The whole material nature is working under the superintendence of the Supreme Lord. Now, whenever there is any discrepancy, just to uh, rectify, sometimes punishment is given, or sometimes the Lord comes Himself, or sometimes His sense is represented, or sometimes He leads some books of knowledge. In this way, the whole process from God's side is to put ourselves always on the right path. That is the process going on. Uh, now, just like in your Christian religion, Lord Jesus Christ, He claimed Himself that He is coming from God as Son of God to reclaim Him, to the, to back to Godhead, back to home. Uh, that is the mission. Every, every man, a reformer or every great uh, religious leader or God Himself, He comes on this earth to reclaim this condition soul to back to Godhead, back to the kingdom of God. That is the whole idea of incarnation. Now, at the present moment, not at the present moment, uh, practically uh, always uh, the people by material hmm, contact, they forget their relation, uh, their relationship with the Supreme Lord, their constitutional position. Now, this, uh, whatever we earn, is, is not the whole thing, but at the, uh, if at least some portion of our income we engage in the service of the Lord for propagating the teaching of God consciousness, that is engaging our uh, fruitive activities, the result of our fruitive activities in the service of the Lord. Uh, another thing, uh, if we want to prosecute our spiritual life, then there are certain formulas. Certain formulas mean that uh, we should not take more than what we need. We should not take more than what we need. We should not neglect also that uh, the, uh, the portion which we actually need, but at the same time we should not accumulate more than what we need. There are six formulas. There are six formulas for spiritual life. In favor and uh, in disfavor. There are six formulas which, if we follow those six formulas, then our spiritual life will be developed gradually. And there are six formulas which we follow, then our spiritual life will be degraded. Ah, so both ways there are six formulas. Ah, I may present those six formulas. First of all, the favorable six formulas are that Ussahat, Dhrijyat, Nishayat, Tattat Karma Pravartanat, Sato Vitte, Sadhu Sange, Sarabhi Bhakti Prasiddha. Ussahat, Ussahat means you must be very much enthusiastic. That in this life, in this human form of life, I must complete my 
spiritual consciousness or God consciousness so that in the next life I may not have this material body. That is called Ustaha. Ustaha means very much enthusiastic. Just like a man is very much enthusiastic that in this life I must accumulate uh, ten million dollars in the bank. And he does what? With great enthusiasm. Similarly, we must have also similar enthusiasm that in this very life, in this very human form of life, I must make my spiritual life perfect so that after leaving this body, I may not come again to this material world. That is called Uttah. Enthusiasm. Uttaha Vrijya. Vrijya means patience. Patience. There may be so many obstacles in prosecuting our spiritual life, but we should patiently uh, go forward. We shall not be disheartened. Uttaha Vrijya Nishya. And with confidence. With confidence that because I am following just like a Bhagavad Gita is a standard view. If not Bhagavad Gita, take Bible or take Koran, whatever you like. Now there are some formulas for persecuting spiritual life. So one must have confidence that because I am following the standard method, so my spiritual life will really be perfected. We must have this confidence. And that is a fact. Who uh, starts first enthusiasm, uh, uh, second uh, patience, and then third uh, with uh, confidence, nishya, uh, dhajya, pusa, dhajya, nishya, tattva, karma, pravartana. Uh, uh, simply uh, enthusiasm will not do. The formulas which are prescribed there, we must follow. Uh, we must uh, actually apply. In our life, Ustad, Hijjat, Nishyat, Tattat, Karma, Prabhattana, Sato, Vritti. And we must be, our Vritti, our profession, our occupation, must be very pure. Must be very pure. Impure activities cannot lead me to spiritual emancipation. We find in Bhagavad Gita that the God is described. Param Brahma Param Dhamam Pavitram Paramam Bhavan. Pavitram means the purest. God is the purest. So unless we are purest, we cannot approach God. Therefore, it is stated the Sato Vritti, our occupation, our Vritti should be very clear, pious. Sato Vritti and Sadhu Sangha. The last, last word is very important. That all these things can be executed if we make our association with similar persons. Similar persons. Those who are on the path of realizing spiritual perfection, we must make our association with such association. Uh, uh, we must be associated with such society so that we can make our... Uh, this is just like we are holding these classes. Uh, this, this is called satsang. Uh, we are not discussing politics. We are not discussing uh, uh, something um, uh, uh, for sense enjoyment. We are discussing from Bhagavad Gita about the constitution of the soul, about uh, the, what, what is God, what is our relation with God. This is called Sattu vritti, satsanga. Satsanga means association with good persons who are engaged, if not same person, uh, at least engaged a uh, uh, certain portion of his life for spiritual realization. So these three, six things are required for making progress in spiritual life. Similarly, there are six other things also which will degrade us from the spiritual life. And what are those? Uttyahara, Prayasascha, Prajalpa, Niyamagraha, Lulam, Janasangascha, Saravi, Bhakti, Pranasati. Pranasati means it is 
lost. The spiritual path is lost by these six principles. And what are these? Na Uttyahara. Uttyahara means to eat more than what you need or to accumulate more than what you need. Ahar means eating and ahar means accumulation. So, of course, any householder, he requires some deposit in the bank for emergency. That is, of course, allowed for a householder. But just for us, we are sannyasi. We are renounced order. We have we haven't got to accumulate any money. You see, that is the system of Indian and philosophy. But those who are householder, family man, they may have some deposit for emergency. Otherwise, those who are renounced order, those who are brahmacari, for them to keep money separately for its maintenance or for accumulating bank balance is not allowed. Atyah. Similarly, ahar, eating. You have to eat only things which can maintain your body properly. Ah. Now, they say for human being, so human being, they eating things as grains, vegetables, fruit, meal, and so many things which are given by God for human eating. So we should be satisfied with those things which are meant for humanity. Uh, we should not um, simply for the pleasure of the tongue, we should not eat anything. That is called atyahar. So atyahar and then prayas. Prayas means to labor very hard to achieve a thing. Life should be conducted in such a way that uh, our necessities of life may come uh, not with great effort, uh, easy. Uh, we should not encumber ourselves, our life, living policy, in an encumbered way. Then our spiritual progress will be hampered. Uh, the modern society has practically uh, encumbered the whole human activities, and therefore they have no time for spiritual culture. Okay. Uh, but the conception of Vedic civilization was that people used to uh, be satisfied on agricultural produce and for three months working during rainy seasons, so they get some agricultural produce and they used to eat the whole year. Uh, so uh, uh, nine months they were free to advance in spiritual culture and only three months they used to work for accumulating their uh, food stuff. So tyahara prayasasta Prajalpa. Prajalpa means uh, talking nonsense. Uh, we assemble and go on talking uh, for nothing, uh, neither for this life, neither for that life. Uh, we should not talk. Suppose if we are gaining something materially, we may go on talking. Or if we are gaining some spiritually, we may talk. But if there is no gain, simply wasting time, that should not be done. Atyahara prayasarsa prajalpa niyamadraha. Niyamadraha means simply to stick up to the rituals. Just like people in every religion, there are some rituals. That in our Hindu religion, the people are advised to observe some ceremonies. In every religion, the same system is there. They go to temple, you go to church. And the Mahmedans, they go to a mosque, and similarly there are a different system. But if one is simply sticking up to the system without seeing how much progress I am making in my life, then that is a waste of time. That is called Niyamagra, simply observing the rules. And Niyamagra also means that you should not neglect also the rules. You should not neglect the rules and regulations. At the same time, you should not stick up to the rules and regulations. Satyahara prayasasya prajalpa niyamatraha lowlam. Lowlam means to be, um, to, to be greedy. To be greedy. You should not be greedy. Uh, uh, 
Uh, I want so much, I want so much. Uh, I, so, I, I want so much. No, not like that. Uttyāra Pryāsacca Prajalpur Nyamagraha Lolam and Janasangascha. Janasangascha means the uh, persons uh, who are uh, not interested in spiritual matter. We should not associate with them. These should be, these are the, these six things which uh, retrograde, the progress of spiritual life and the other six things which uh, uh, I previously, uh, just a moment I described, they will help us in our progressive life uh, to the spiritual path. I say, in this way, that work should not be stopped. Work according to our position, according to our quality. Work must be executed, but the fruit of the result we should not accept. If we accept the fruit, then I must be responsible for the uh, reaction, reaction of the work. Now, this question has come to uh, be discussed by Lord Krishna to Arjuna, because Arjuna was a uh, uh, military man. He was he belonged to the administrative class, and the and the, this Bhagavad Gita was described in the battlefield. So he was hesitating from his duty. So I shall not fight. I shall not fight because by killing my kinsman, by killing my uh, spiritual master, by killing my teacher, killing my grandfather, I will be sinful. That was his conclusion. Now Krishna says that. If you think in that way, that you shall be um, um, uh, I mean, the enjoying, enjoying the reaction, then, of course, uh, uh, you will not be watching in the spiritual field. Uh, you don't think in that way. Because this work is a duty, and because I want that you should fight, he, I mean, it is the order from the authority. He is Sri Krishna is accepted, accepted as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore you should fight. So fighting for the cause of the Supreme, that will not affect you. That will not affect you. Thank you very much.